Hello everyone, this is Johannes and this is Hino and you are watching Board Gaming Ramblings and today we are taking a look at Till Letum. This is a new game in the T-series from Board and Dice designed by Simone Luciani and Daniele Tashini. It plays from 1 to 4 players in about 60 to 100 minutes. So this is one of the most anticipated games for us as always the new games from board and dice are high on our list we are huge fans of all the other most of the other t games not yes. all of them we are supposed to do like a ranking video so if you still want to see that let us know in the video in yeah. the comments not let us know in the video i don't know how you would do that pop up randomly on the screen while we, we film want to see that that would scare me a lot yes so because we we still have quite a few of them we haven't played this for keep or curl yeah but today we're talking about this little one which is called Tiletum or Tiletum or Tiletum. It is I'm pretty sure the old name of a small town I think in the Netherlands. Okay cool. That might be wrong that might be right. You will... You'll never know. Oh, I think you will because well, I think it says on the Board Game Geek page. Okay yeah. I tried to google search Tiletum only to find the board game. Okay. So I don't think it's a name that's actually been used for anything for quite a long time. Yeah. As always let's start with a short overview. This game is a pretty classic Euro game. You are going to be drafting dice. There's dice involved as in most of the games of the T-series. You're going to be drafting dice and the, die, the number on the dice can tell you what kind of color. No, not what kind of... The color of the dice telling the color. The number of the dice can tell you what kind of resource you're getting. And you're going to take that resource and then you're going to get to do the action that's associated with it. There's an action wheel that's going to move around. So one turn or one round. Four is going to be one action and the next round the next another number will be that action and the number of action points you get is the opposite number opposite side of the dice so if you take a six you get six resources but you only get one action point but if you choose to do only get one resource then you get six action points and everything in between so that is kind of the balance of the game when to get your resources when to do the actions and always of course depending on what action you need to do so what will you be doing? You'll be moving around on the board with your architect and your merchant, going into cities, building these pillars to be able to build cathedrals. You're going to build houses to be able to score different fairs. That's going to be at the end of each round. Also just to get points because this feels like a kind of a point salad -y game. Yeah. So many ways to get your points. So you're going to be moving around there. You're also going to use your player board where you have some small houses where you can house different characters. You're also going to get contracts and try to resolve them to get points. And those are basically the things you're going to do. There's also a king's track. That's the last action I didn't explain where you will move up on the king's track to get points and to be farther ahead in turn order. And that is the short overview of the game. This game looks like your classic Euro game. It's mm -hmm. a little less beige than I would want. It's more like... You think it's a little less beige? Yes. Like the whole board is just beige. There's nothing else. <laughs> well, yeah. But like, um, it's a lighter color beige oh, yeah. uh, than okay. Tekendu, mm. for example. Like very deserty beige. Okay, yeah. So it's um, a wrong <laughs> beige. Yeah. That's a weird Well, curiosity. I think it looks nice. Uh -huh. But it's like, not like these beautiful pieces of artwork. It's nope. more like, th this is a map and this this is a church and this is the the place where you get your dice mm -hmm. and the character uh, illustrations are decent yeah but all in all um this is a euro game and it looks like it looks like it it doesn't bother me though i think it's well laid out it's very easy to get like yeah. uh, where things are and how many moves you get to get around on a board for example so i like how it looks i think that everything looks nice i think the map looks kind of boring it's kind of just that one color and nothing else and it's just like the first time i saw it i was like oh is that it and then you play a couple of times you just don't mine it anymore you don't see yeah. it there's one big problem with the components a huge problem with the components and that is with the dice versus the colors of the resources because oh, yeah. i didn't explain it correctly or, 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 or the full thing in the in, in the beginning because when you take a, a die you're going to get the resource that is linked to that die and they have decided to have a gray die which gives you wool which is white and they have a bluish gray die which gives you iron which is gray yeah. so they're and those are almost the same color and then you have like a darker one which is almost black but not entirely black which gives you stone so there's three kind of gray it's a gray gray blue and gray black yeah. which you just have to remember which well, they are and it's not a good thing i, I don't see how they could like there's so many colors to choose 
It could have been white. Oh yeah. The wool the, one. The, the the main problem is not with the darker gray one because you can distinguish that one oh, yeah. pretty well, but with the the iron the gray and, and the blue the, gray. The, the, yeah, the brown gray and the blue gray are very mm -hmm. alike. I didn't actually see that there were two different colors until you pointed it out to me. Oh, first time you play, people are like, oh, and are those so, different? Yeah, and so often I'm just like, oh, if I do that action, I get tree iron. I'm just mm -hmm. like, no, I get tree wool. And Yay. Yeah, that's so frustrating. Yeah, so that is one thing I don't really see why it's there. Let's talk a bit about the rule book. Yeah. Because again, it's a rule book. We're gonna look at this one. We're gonna look at this page soon. Uh, the rule book is fine. It's good. It's well laid out. I enjoyed reading the rule book. It made me be excited about the game. It was clear. I didn't need to read the things many times. It also has a great like overview of almost all the tiles. The one thing this game doesn't have is play rates. Yeah. And there's many, like many of the actions, like when you choose this action, you can divide your action points into these three actions. They're not yeah. hard to remember. No. Nope. So the second time you play, you will remember them. But there's many of these actions, and there's no reason why we're not going to do like a long rant because you know how we feel yes. about this. Play rates to the people. Make play rates yes. in your game. There's no and, good reason. And if you don't have a play rate, don't do this. Hello. Why it's would I care here. to look at this? This is also on the box. I yeah, can look at that on the box. This. Yeah. And you could have a round structure. You could have a play rate with all the actions. So yeah. at least it could be on the board or on the table yeah. and people could look at it. There is really no excuse for not doing that. And it yeah. just annoys me so much. It, luckily for me, I, like, I read the rules. So it's very easy for me the first time to just internalize all of it. But it's hard to remember, like, for example, you can spend two gold as a resource. Mm. One of the times we played, a player didn't under or remember that until the end of the game. And it's like, oh, can you do that? And that would have changed the game for him. Yeah. So those things are so weird. And then it's not nowhere on the board uh, as well. And that is, is kind of not good. Yeah, I think like the only thing that saves it in this game is that it's fairly intuitive what you do yes. when you pick an action. You yeah. can either like, for example, with uh, the, the building houses action or mm -hmm. like moving with your, what do you call him, the merchant. Yeah. You move or you take a bonus tile or you build a house and that's the things you can do. Um, and it feels very natural yeah, the second absolutely. time around, but I would have loved a play raid, especially since your turn is often interrupted by bonuses that yeah. you get. It's easy to get like, oh, where was I again? Mm -hmm. That would be nice to just have that. There is many, many of them, that is more like a gameplay thing. I'm going to do one thing here that is also mainly a gameplay thing. But it's another thing now I'm going to do it in gameplay. Uh, <laughs> Spoiler it's about the alert. bonus tiles. So when we talk about the bonus tiles, so we're going to talk about that. So we played this game two and four. Yeah. And how long was it? Do you um, remember? Do you remember? I'm very bad at this. Uh, I think we spent. Uh, no, you have to do it. Because okay. I, can't remember. I will do it because I do remember it. It will be faster. First time, two and a half hours. That was a learning game. And then we spent with four players between an hour and 40 and an hour and 50. And then we played two players an hour and 15 minutes. Yeah. So what did you think about those player counts? Uh, I thought it was nice. Mm -hmm. I felt like the game um, didn't outstay as welcome. No, no. Um, like one hour, 40 minutes, four players is great for, for a game of this like size. Yes, I agree. And I think absolutely you can get it down to a little more because sometimes on your turn you have these lengthy bonus, uh, it, as I said, sometimes you get derailed to doing all the bonus stuff that mm -hmm. you uh, are avail available to you. And sometimes that can trigger some AP because you have to, yeah, um, not all things are easy to plan. No, but uh, 100 minutes is basically what the box is saying. So yeah. to get it to the box length is good. That is good. I will say the four player, which we have played the most, was nice. Yeah. Two players, I would say, was not so nice. Yeah. You take away, I'm mean, going to talk more about this in the gameplay, but a lot of the things that is enjoyable in this game comes from the interaction and, 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 and trying to get somewhere before somebody else does trying to snatch something, trying to plan around what other people will do. With two players, you, you don't get that. And it felt like a, hmm, a pretty just standard Euro game. Nothing really that grabbed me. And I also saw more of the flaws that I see in the gameplay when we play two players 
uh, ex like uh, that I didn't see with four players. Yeah, I think like three or four players is absolutely. We haven't played the... three, so we can. I haven't played three, but nope. I imagine it's more interaction than with two. Yep. That makes sense. Uh, I think that would be preferred over the two-player um, game. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, mostly because of the interaction, which makes it in a two-player game less like tense when people take a die. Yeah. Uh, because yeah, there's more things that can happen between your turns. You have to be like. Yeah, prepare for everything in another way and also the map is more interesting with more players as well in my opinion that is true so we have kind of segued into gameplay yes. as we do with this because it is kind of a gameplay segment so let's talk about the gameplay and answer the big question that you always want to know is it, is fun? it fun is it fun is it a fun smoothie a fun cannon or is it not fun you will soon yeah. find out after the break and we're back <laughs> <laughs> and this is a new way I'm doing breaks now because people like it when there's an ad when you say there's gonna be an ad uh, Because you know it's coming then uh, so Let's first talk about like there is I will say there is nothing new in this game hmm. There's nothing I haven't seen before yeah There is no like like this is a very classic euro game well it actually is something new that I can't remember that I have seen before. Uh -huh. I think it's cool that the top level of the dice yeah, that gives you one new. thing and the other. So, and no matter what dice you get, you get a balanced action. Yeah. Like, you take one thing in trade for the other. So a high number isn't necessarily good if you don't want a lot of resources. That is, I agree, that is the most like that interesting, is cool. that is the most like interesting it. mechanism. And that might be a new mechanism, I yeah. agree we haven't seen that. But what you do with those actions and you do with those resources are all things we've seen before. I agree. You will be moving on a track, you will be taking characters, putting them into house to get some small bonuses, you will be moving around on the board to place houses and pillars and try to be the first in building cathedrals that give you points and trying to get these scorings basically. So there, those are the things you will get points for during the game. Let's talk about the different aspects of the game because even though things aren't new they might be fun. And fun is good, and boring is bad. That is kind of like the board gaming ramblings mantra. Fun is good, boring is That's bad. That's what we're known for saying all these years. So I will say that there are kind of four elements. Yeah. You have the dice drafting, yeah. you have the map, yeah. you have the little track which is the points and also the turn order because the turn order is important, especially with more people. Mm. And you have your player board with your contracts and, and the characters. Yeah. So let's start by talking about the map. Yeah. Do you enjoy the map and what you're doing on the map? I think the map is fine. Mm -hmm. I don't think the map is the most fun thing in this game, mm -hmm. but absolutely moving around, especially with four players, trying to see, okay, you're moving down there, you might snatch those bonus tile before I do, mm -hmm. then I maybe go on a go try, go another direction. <laughs> words uh, and also uh, how the scorings are placed on the map yeah. are interesting how the how the game urges you to be at certain points on the map at mm -hmm. a certain time mm -hmm. of the game because there's four scoring in four different cities throughout the game one each round the first one is always going to be in uh, Tiletum where everybody starts everybody has a house there and then there's one more at the end of each round yeah and to be able to score it as you said you kind of have to be there with yeah. your merchant or you have to place a house there yes so when we let's talk a bit about those scorings because yeah. those scorings i feel like the games we have played that they kind of not dictates but tells you kind of what you have to do in this game yeah and i feel like the variability of the game comes from those scorings yeah, I think um, you don't have to go for those scorings, but the game... It, not it's all a, of them. You, yeah, have the, to, you have to some, go for some, some of them. Of them yeah. uh, but there is potentially a lot of points there. Yeah. So missing out on a scoring, especially one that you have actually tried to focus on, is yeah. huge. So you should definitely try to be like, f um, what do you call it, shape your game plan into fitting those scoring places mm -hmm. and that will also uh, dictate how how the people will move on the map because people usually want to go to the same scoring as you yeah so i feel like the thing um, and of course if we play this with different groups 50 times it might change up how we play but i don't i don't feel like this is a game where I would play 10 times and be like, oh, and there's this new strategy, like finding the depths. Yeah. I feel like this is not a very deep game. No, I agree. I feel like it's a very tactical game, yes. like you also said, that you 
kind of had to look at the scoring, so you have to look at the dice that's available, see what is the best thing I can do. Yeah. Sometimes, like, because you see all the scorings and they get less and less valuable, there's kind of a random element that the, the scoring might be worth a lot, but if it's later, it will be worth less. Yeah. And, and you can kind of make a strategy around yes. what you want to do overall in the game. Like, if there's a scoring at the end for building sets of pillars and buildings, then I'm going to try to build a lot of sets uh, of yeah. sets during the game and try to be at that scoring. And I feel like you can kind of not do so much at one scoring, but if everybody goes for the scorings, and, and there's so many points there. Yeah. Like there and, and, and many of them do things to make you build buildings and pillars, and you have to build pillars to be able to do one of the other scorings, yeah. which is build the cathedrals. And so to be able to build the cathedrals, you will have to be able to build the pillars. And how do you get the pillars? Yeah, you get the pillars by finishing contracts. Because yeah. you start with two of them and then you finish contracts to get more of them. And you probably will want to build some houses. And to be able to build houses, yeah. you have to fill the houses on your board with characters to unlock those houses. Yeah. Which results in a game where you kind of need to do a bit of everything. Yes. We tried to talk like, we sat for like 15 minutes after the last game for an hour ago. And I tried to think, is there, I can't see how I will play this game and be like, oh, I'm not going to do any characters this game because then I'm going to get no houses mm -hmm. and I'm going to, like if there's no scoring for houses, houses in itself doesn't give you so much points. But then getting the characters with the bonuses and be able to get the, crests on them so you can get boosting your actions so you get more action points there's like there's an incentive to do everything even though there's not the scorings i agree and i think also the scoring is that like everybody wants to go for the same things at the same time yeah makes like at the end of the game, I'm not sitting be like, oh, Johanna some did something completely different than I did. No. And he like did that and he still did a, got a lot of points. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, one time one player just like boosted up on this points track, the Emperor's track or something. That, track, that was yeah. cool. That was a little different. But other than that, it's as you said earlier also when we talked, um, mm -hmm. It's basically not who did what, it's just like who did the same thing, but better than the other player. Yeah, and there's nuances, like yeah. you can, even though there's not uh, scorings for contracts, you can go heavy into them, you can go for different things, but I feel like yeah. there's more nuances yeah. of going for a different thing than going for a strategy, and that is fine. Yeah. It's not like you don't have to have like strategies, and that is why what I said in the two versus four players, yeah. I feel the four player is way more interesting. Because since everybody's gonna do like a little bit of everything, it's gonna be a little bit here, a little bit here, the interaction is important. The interaction of trying to think about what die do I need to have now? What do I think the other player's gonna do? And try to get that die. You can manipulate with money to move the dice around to do actions that you might not be able to do. And the, the dice, which I like, I like the dice is both the resource, the action yeah. and and also the number of resources in one uh, decision. I enjoyed that. I think the most interesting thing in this game is the dice drafting. Mm -hmm. Because I think like the tactical um, decision it makes me do is really interesting. Yeah. And all of the uh, small things that you have to consider and like both the action and the resource that you get, yeah. but also the bonus actions. I think the bonus actions is really powerful in this game. You can get them on the... Um, it's a bonus tile, bonus so not really tiles, bonus actions, yes. you can they use them for many different things. Yes, so they can be like action points in a certain type, or they can be resources, or they can be something else. Like a contract, or yes, a crest. for example. And uh, you can find them on, uh, on the map as well, mm -hmm. and they basically let you like not be so dependent on what dice you grab, yep. or they can make it better, or... Um, so I really think that when I'm picking a dice, it's really important to get that bonus die, bonus tile if I can get it. Yep. And I will often shape my um, tactic for this round mm -hmm. after those. Yeah, it's kind of hard because you sometimes I really need to do an action and yeah. then the player before me do that action and take the bonus tile. And I had to like think, is that in the action still good enough or should I do something else and hope I can still do it later? Yeah. This is one of those games, as many of these games in this genre, where you basically you only have 12 actions throughout the game. Yeah. And the game is all about, not all about, but a lot about, no, not that, a lot about finding ways to do more things that you are supposed to do. And 
that is like a mixed bag here, I feel like. One of the players we played with, and I actually really agreed with him, he played for the first time and he was like, one of the reasons I, 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 I think it's a good game, but one of the reasons I, I'm not going to buy it is because I get like disconnected yeah. from the game. Because on my turn, I could do this. I could take a die, I will take the resources, I will then move, do one movement point, pick up that tile, now I use that tile, do three action points, another action, and then I move my thing again, place a building, and then I'm going to use another tile, finish a contract, place this down here, which makes me got to move this over there, and the other players have no chances in yes. following that. Yeah. And that is important, because I felt that was better after a few plays. Yeah. I didn't feel that was a problem, so that the... First and second time of the game, I, I felt very disconnected. We played at a con as well, so there was a lot of things going on. But the third time, still at the con, I felt like I had more... I was more invested in the game because it was easier for me to follow along with what people were doing, which is important to me when I play games. I don't mind multiplayer solitaire, I don't mind sitting and doing my own thing, but I want to know what you're doing and be engaged in your turns as well. Yes. Absolutely. I usually am so up in my own head That's that true. I don't ma don't mind that. It's not that important for you. No, but at, like the first time we played it, I too felt very disconnected. Mm -hmm. But like the last time we played it, now I didn't mind what you was doing, but but I didn't feel disconnected to it. No, and also when we played two players, it didn't matter that yeah, much because it was, it was only quick one player doing another thing. I think the turn order track is mm -hmm. cool. Yep. Both that you, I think turn order is important. Very important for players. When you're lost, you're getting fewer bonus tiles. It's, yeah, yeah, they're gonna get grabbed, uh, but then. Or you'll have to take it another action to get it. Yes, or you use a lot of coins to manipulate the dice. Yeah. Uh, but also how you actually get negative points if you ignore the track, mm -hmm. or you get positive points if you move. Like, if you focus on turn order, you can also get points out yeah. of that. You can get from negative 10 to positive uh, 15. 15. Because yeah. every turn of the game, uh, you're going to move down, possibly. You're going to flip a tile and see if it moves you down on the track or not. And, and then you're going to get those positive or negative points. One thing which makes it even more bad to not have a play rate, more bad to not have a play rate, batter, is worse. batter. That almost sounds worse. like better. So batter, that should be the worst. <laughs> is that all the tiles you get, uh, you have to place them in your warehouse before you get them out. And that is also like a pretty tight puzzle. You can only have yeah, four tiles. That is cool. Which are everything. Contracts, the crests, the characters, the, the bonus tiles, the helpers, all of it is in those four spaces. And one thing that annoys me, doesn't really bother me, but it bothers me because there's no play way to help you remember it, is that everything you can do to interact with those is free actions because all, all the actions are fine, but then there's many free actions as well. So all the tiles you sp all your, the tiles you can use as a free action, except the character. So one thing you place there has something to do with an action, and the others don't. So that's just like another layer of things that makes it more complicated to understand. It is pretty well explained, and the character tiles where you place them has a symbol that shows that it costs something. But then it's like very hard to remember that, oh, but doing a contract is a free action, and doing yeah. this is a free action. So it's kind of like, I just would have loved to have that play rate, play rate. to make it a yeah. smoother experience. I agree. So, let's answer the big question, and let's do some final thoughts. Yes, let's First do question, it. which is, oh, let's do, maybe we should just add, do... Is it fun in the beginning of Final Thoughts? Because yeah. is it fun is kind of the start of Final Thoughts. Yeah. First off, one thing we forgot. This is the new category. How heavy is it? Oh, yeah. Because that's important in this one. This is a lighter experience for me. Yeah. Mm. I feel like this is like the actions are more simple. Everything you do is more simple. It's not like brain burning. It's way less complicated than many of the other T games. Like Chris Magistus, The Kenu, Taiwan Tinsuyu. Ma ma most of those games are a few levels above, above this. I think like um, because we we uh, gave like come together a, a weight yep. review. I don't know yep. recently, and that we said was a medium light. Mm -hmm. I would say this is a little above, but not much. No. So it's like between light, medium, and medium for me. Yeah, on the lighter end of medium. It's on the lighter yeah. end of medium, absolutely. Uh, for us, of course. Yeah. If you never played a heavier game, this it will be a lot. But yeah, that, that uh, we, we haven't gotten to the point where we will compare them like people want to do, but we will try to get to that as soon as we can. Yeah. So, 
you can start answering any question. Is it fun? And what are your final thoughts? I thought it was fun, mm -hmm. but not like fun enough. Um, it's weird because I like the game, yeah. but I don't love it. Yeah. It's uh, got some cool, interesting things. Uh, the dice drafting being my favorite part of the mm -hmm. game. Uh, but then, as you said, like, it's nothing in this game that makes me go, oh, Oh, that was really interesting and cool and I want to play it again. Let's go again. You know that feeling when you feel like kind of an addict or something mm -hmm. and you just like want your next shot? I know that feeling like a lot. In games. Yeah, in games. Um, and I don't, don't get that feeling here. So now mm -hmm. after we've reviewed it, I don't see us really urging to bring this game to the table again. Mm -hmm. Uh, even though it's it's a nice game, yeah. I had fun while I played it. Uh, I think those little combo things that you get to your, do on your turn, when you get this, all of these little things that just like synergize really well together with each other are really satisfying. Mm -hmm. I think it's fun. It's no fun canon though. It's not even a little one for me. It's like, it's an above average game mm -hmm. for me. I think I will give it like a 6.5. Yeah. I agree with most everything you said. Like we, we sometimes we very much differ, but many times we don't. So I think it's fun. I maybe it, it like went from this first time. So I was like, oh, it's fine. And I enjoyed it a bit more, and I enjoyed it kind of a bit more again. And two players I didn't really enjoy that much. So I feel like the because what you're doing, you're gonna do the same things, depend on like, this little bit, this little bit of that, and then the interaction was very important for me to make it interesting and make it fun. I enjoy that you can play it four players in one hour and 40 minutes. Yeah, that's cool. So there was like, everybody agreed as like, oh, that is a quick game. Uh, I'm really, really happy with that. I agree with you that I feel like it is a fun, a good game, but not great, not amazing. It's one of my least favorite of the T games. Like there's most of them I've been like really a big fan of and this was, not um, and I don't like people like because we I'm we always get like well this is a game we want it to be good so we always get kind of like that hype thing especially me you don't research I games no you just idea. play what I put in front of you I should win everything it's but fine. it's it's so it's it's the first time I thought it was fun and then I kind of like I've been thinking so much about the game like what do I like what do I don't like I feel like it's it's just, as you said, not enough to be a fantastic game. It's a good game. I'm pretty sure many people will enjoy oh, it. Oh, yeah. And many people will probably enjoy it more than we did. But for us, and for me, it's just like an above average game. I'm going to give it a 6.5 as well. It's good. Not great. Don't feel the need to play it again. And that is that. If yeah. you are still here and you have not subscribed to our channel, you can do so now by clicking the subscribe button. It's down there. It's fun and it's free and it makes us happy. Like this. If you want to do something that's not free, you can. Go to patreon.com slash boardgamingramblings and support us there. Yeah. And that is the end of the video. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Johannes. I'm Cinema. And you've been watching Board Gaming Ramblings and bye bye.